Hello, I'm Alex, and today we're going to explore Haas's Advanced Tool Management System, or ATM. This powerful feature monitors tool wear, life expectancy, and your tool usage during CNC machining operations. It can even replace worn tools automatically. By automating tool changes and managing tool groups, it ensures your machine keeps running smoothly, minimizing interruptions. Now, let's walk through how to set up and configure advanced tool management. Navigate to the ATM page from current commands. The upper table shows all of the tool groups and all of the tool life limits. Tool groups allow multiple tools to share the same job. This is useful for long production runs where tools may wear out before completing the job. Even if you only want to monitor the life of a single tool, it will need to be added to a tool group. To create a new group, go to the Add Group line and press Enter. Assign a group number from 1,000 to 2,999. Enter your desired tool life limits into the corresponding column of the tool group table. These can be a number of holes, a number of times the tool is used, the max spindle load, or the total time or feed time of the tool. You can use any combination of limits for each tool group. If you're using max spindle load as one of your wear limits, you can select an expired action for the machine to do after a tool has been overloaded. It can generate an alarm, feed hold, start the beeper, lower the feed rate, or automatically switch to the next tool in the group the next time that that tool offset is called. For this example, we are going to use a drill and set the control up to switch to a duplicate tool after a set number of holes has been made. I'll set the holes limit to two and leave the rest of the limits blank. The expired action column won't apply since I'm not monitoring spindle load. I'll leave my tool order set to ordered. This means the control will use the tools in the order they appear in the group, but I could change that to be from oldest to newest or vice versa. Now, I'll press F4 to switch to the lower box. This table contains all of the tools for the selected tool group. The two tools I'm using are already set up and touched off as tool one and tool two. The tool life limits for each tool should automatically populate and can be reset using origin. The final thing is to update the program to use the tool group instead of the tool offset number. So I'll replace my T1, H1, and D1 offset calls in my program with the number of the tool group. So it becomes T1000, H1000, and D1000. But there is no D offset since we're drilling and diameter compensation isn't active. I'll single block through this program that is set up to drill four holes. After the first hole, we can see tool life drop to 50%. After the second hole, it drops to 0%. If I press cycle start again, the machine drills the next hole with the same drill, even though it is expired. Note this aspect of the functionality. If you're drilling a lot of holes in your program, realize that ATM won't switch out the drill until the program is complete. If you're concerned that the tool will have a serious failure, then you should probably also add a spindle load limit or other monitoring system to your tool. Now that we've restarted our program, on the T1000M6 line, the control sees that our current drill Tool 1 has expired, and it will switch to the next tool in our group, Tool 2, to drill our next set of holes. Now, let's look at how using the max spindle load limit can have different machining effects. I'll use this face mill that's set up in Tool 3 and Tool 4. I'll set my limit to 100% spindle load. I've ran this cut before, and with these speeds and feeds, it should use around 90% spindle load. The control will only monitor the tool load during feed movements, so you don't have to worry about the load spike from accelerating or stopping the spindle. Let's use alarm as our expired action. I'll run this first cut and the control shouldn't tell me that anything is wrong. Now, I'll increase the depth of cut a little bit and rerun the same cut to simulate my insert wearing out. Wow, our control has detected the higher load and automatically generated an alarm, telling me that something is wrong. 
Let's reset the tool group using Origin and run the same example for the various expired action options. So besides alarming out, I can have the control feed hold, or I could set up the control to not stop cutting, but turn on the beeper to let me know that something is wrong. Option four is to have the control automatically lower the feed rate until the spindle load is below what I've set my target parameter to be. The control doesn't actively show the reduced feed rate, but we can see that that same cut that was overloading is now maxing out at a close to 100%, which is where we set our load limit to. Or I can have it switch to a backup tool the next time that tool offset is called. That's the basics of advanced tool management. Even if you're not running backup tooling, I'd highly recommend setting it up as a reminder to check or replace your cutters before they fail catastrophically. Thanks for watching.